Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another screencast by your Earth Science teacher, Mr. Stano. And today we're going to talk about how bedrock can affect the topography of land. The bedrock or the resistance of the different rock that makes up the ground that we stand on will cause any sort of water that's flowing over it to drain into several different patterns. These patterns are called drainage patterns, and it's all really going to depend on the type of bedrock that's in the area and a little bit of the changes within the topography. Here are four major types of drainage patterns. And we can see here the names right underneath. Uh, these are definitely diagrams I would try to get down. We have dendritic, radial, rectangular, and trellis. These are the four major types of stream drainage patterns that we typically see. So the first one, the dendritic one, uh, dendritic, it gets its name, just it looks like the branches of a tree. This is going to occur when the bedrock is roughly the same resistance all the way throughout. So what we end up happening is the water will collect in whatever low lying areas that may be and kind of make their way towards a central branch or trunk of the river system. This whole system right here, would be known as a water shed. All the water in this area collects and goes into this major stream right here, and then it's gonna flow out. That is typically what we see within here in the Northeast also. Next one up is our radial. With radial, what we'll end up seeing, and it's very similar as this, is that we have a central high peak and the water will kind of make its way around like this and flow off. Okay, so this one, not the best illustration of it, but you can see how we can basically have these concentric circles that kind of go around representing the stream drainage. And the water comes out that way and that way. It's all basically, it's like spokes of a wheel almost. Here, the rectangular is interesting. Is this one we have different resistance of bedrock in the area. So the water will just find the path of least resistance. So this might be more resistant right here, this might be less. So what ends up happening, the water hits this more resistant rock and it's gonna go around it. Down this way, this might be more resistant. So it's gonna make its way around the more resistant rock and just cutting through the least resistant. Our next one up is a trellis. Here, typically what we have is a series of ridges. So you can see a ridge here, here, and here. Our water, will basically collect in those little valleys. So the water collects and then finds a weak point within that ridge and kind of goes through. All the water collects here, here, kind of comes through and goes through. So it's relatively simple. And what we're looking at is basically the water pooling in between ridges. If we look at the continental divide, it's basically right around here, Rocky Mountains, any water that falls on the west side will go this way. Any water on the east side will move through this way. Here's our Mississippi River right in this region. So the water fall there. Get water from Appalachia falling down and through there. So this is our major division point within uh, the United States. All this water flowing towards the Pacific and over here towards the Atlantic. Okay, so this is once again just a little bit about the continental divide. Okay, and that's about it. Uh, we'll stop here before we go into the stages of maturity for the landscapes. Hope you enjoyed the screencast. Take care.